Assalamualaikum dear students, it's Dr. Masuma Mehtab. Welcome to my YouTube channel Medical School. So today we are going to learn about hernia and its type. So let's go. Starting with the definition of hernia, it's an abnormal protrusion of abdominal content. So there might be certain risk factors behind this condition because it's abnormal, right? Uh, not all of us develop these things. So there might be risk factors. They are all the factors that causes increased abdominal pressure. Now you can guess what can be the risk factors. Let's go. That's obesity, chronic cough, multiple pregnancy. You can note here all these conditions lead to increased abdominal pressure, right? And then we have increased abdominal pressure due to ascites and ascites can be due to any cause like liver cirrhosis or what. Okay, then we have weight bearing, the guys who love to do gym, right? So this condition is very common in that means. And then we have straining. So the straining is mostly due to chronic constipation and urinary obstruction. Okay, now what is the composition of hernia? Hernia contains three main parts. It contains sac, it contains its covering. So, starting with the sac, it has mouth, it has body, and neck. So, here you can see in this picture, this is the protrusion of abnormal abdominal content. Now, this is the body, this is the neck, and this is the mouth of the hernia. Okay. The next thing uh, we have to discuss is contents of hernia. So, the hernia can, they can be the part of bowel, like anterocele. They can be part of omentum, like omentoseal. They can be part of bladder. Even though I have uh, learned somewhere that it also contains, sometimes it also contains a part of ovary. Okay. So, come to the classification of hernia. We have these classification. So, we have reducible hernias. So, we can, we have reducible hernia. The reducible hernias are those type of hernias which can return back to the abdomen. However, irreducible, in this case, there, there are no any other complications, but the hernia cannot return back, right? And then we have obstructive. If the bowel is within the hernia, then if it's obstructed, it's called as obstructed hernia. Then we have strangulated hernia. If blood supply is compromised, when you have obstructed, but you, your bowel is obstructed, but you have a good supply. So it's obstructed. But when you have obstruction as well as compromised blood flow, that is called a strangulated hernia, right? And then we have inflamed, if contents of the sac have become inflamed, that is inflamed hernia. And then we have incarcerated. If the portion of the colon occupying a hernial sac is blocked with feces, this is called as incarcerated. Okay. Come to the next point, which is sites of hernia. We know there, there are certain anatomical weak points, which are basically sites of hernia. So let's discuss. Umbilicus, para-umbilical region, epigastric region, inguinal region, and femoral region, incisional region, lumbar region. Okay. So here you can see this is the umbilical point. So there can be umbilical hernia. So we have discussed from the xiphoid process up to the umbilicus. There can be epigastric hernia. And then we have here the incisional hernia. Okay. Then we have here the spigalian hernia. And number fifth one is, okay, then we have spigalian hernia, the femoral inguinal hernia, and this is the femoral hernia. Starting with umbilical hernia, when the abdominal contents comes out of the defect within the umbilicus, this is called as umbilical hernia. And remember this thing, that umbilical hernia is very common in infants and mostly in premature babies. It rarely gets strangulated. So for that reason, the doctors delay the surgical operation of umbilical hernia because uh, it spontaneously resolved within two years of life. Okay. Now, this is the umbilical hernia. Here you can see there is umbilicus and here is the defect from where the gut is coming out, right? Okay, the next is para-umbilical hernia. Now, the abdominal contents comes out but not from the true umbilicus. Now, here is the umbilicus and we know that there are four 
circumferences of the umbilicus. Here is upper, here is lower and here we have two lateral. So whenever the hernia is coming out from any of the circumference, it's only involving a single circumference of umbilicus. So that would be paraumbilical hernia. Then we have epigastric hernia. So the hernia that occurs at any point from the xiphoid process to the umbilicus. It follows the path of sternum. Uh, sorry, linea alba. Now, this is the xiphoid process. Suppose, I know I'm not good uh, in drawing. So, starting from this point up, up to the umbilicus. So, up to this. This is the path of the linea alba. Okay. <clears throat> So here, whenever any defect occurs, that is called as epigastric hernia. Okay. So mostly feeds come from this region. That's why it is called as the fatty hernia of linea alba. Remember, it's mostly commonly the fade is there, but it doesn't mean the bowel cannot come out from this point. Okay. Here you can see this is the from xiphoid process up to the umbilicus. Here is the protrusion, which is called as epigastric hernia. Now, let's read this. This is usually a small protrusion through the linea alba in the upper part of the abdomen and it contains extra peritoneal fate only but may contain momentum or small intestine as I have told you earlier. Okay. Now, here somehow the features of epigastric hernia is important because it's uh, different from other. Mostly, it occurs in males and it's very painful. It, it, uh, it also resembles or mimic the pain of peptic ulcer. Okay, the point here is it can be reduced because of narrow neck. It cannot be reduced because of narrow neck. So here you can understand the point that it can strangulate very early. So you have to treat the epigastric hernia as soon as possible. Okay, so what can be the treatment of hernia? I inshallah I'll upload uh, the treatment of hernia in my next uh, video. But here I can only tell you about the conservative treatment. You can put a belt and um, the, pa uh, the patients are prescribed to have a belt so that the contents does not come out, right? And the surgical treatment, inshallah, I'll be discussing this. But here you have only a few points, the herniotomy, herniorraphy, and hernioplasty. These three procedures are main for doing the hernia, okay, uh, herniotomy. Right, so it was all about the hernia and if you have any query or question you can ask me. Thank you a lot.